as a coach, I do a lot of work uh, in neurobiology. I'm really fascinated by the way the brain works and the way it influences our behavior. And I find it very liberating for myself and also for my clients to, to realize that a lot of times the, the way the brain works is not a matter of us not having enough uh, willpower or enough sense of duty or enough stick to or whatever enough you want to put in there. It's just the way our brain works. And we are at our most productive and our most um, free and our happiest when, when we kind of partner with our brain instead of trying to boss it around. <laughs> and, and it's one of those um, issues that, you know, we all struggle with because when am I being just lazy and when am I just really needing a break? And I find that, that um, the, the whole COVID season has really uh, stressed people about that because you don't have the break room to wander into and have three minutes of back and forth with somebody else to kind of clear your brain and send you someplace different. So I, I brought a little thing about one way our brain works that, that has helped me think about this time when, when I'm trying to manage my brain and make it work better. And, and neuroscientists have two networks they talk about. They're on, it's not like there are only two networks in the brain, but there are two that work together. One they call the default mode network. And you've, you've experienced that. You're taking a shower or you're taking a walk and you're not thinking about anything in particular. You're not on task. And all of a sudden you have this insight and go, that's exactly what I needed to do. You know, and you got to write it down or, so, or by the time you get back from the walk, you forgot. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, but that, mode and I love the idea that that's our default mode in our brain the other network that partners with it is called the task positive network and that's when you're so task oriented you're thinking real hard or you're running down the task list or you're making the task list or whatever those things are and those two networks they're kind of mutually exclusive. You can't be using both of them at the same time. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen here and I'm sorry, Cindy, I wish you could see this, but let's do, there we go. Are you guys looking at the, at what looks like kind of a blue and white river? Yes. Can you see that? Yes, yes. Okay. Well, the blue line, to me, this drawing always looks like the blue lines of the river, and I don't know what the white stuff is, but really the white in between the two blue lines is the river, and, and the blue is just helping you know that that's the river, okay? <laughs> and you see over on the left side, it says the default mode network, and on the other side, on the right-hand side, it says the task positive network. It's in white type up and down in the blue. I think it makes it really hard to see, but anyway. This is, this is, and the, the name of this thing, I'm going to sc scroll up just a little bit. It's called crossing the river because what we learn about our brains is that when our brains quit working, we need to let our brain quit working and change mode. So what I find is I get on that task positive side of the river and I'm zooming along and after an hour and a half, maybe a couple of hours, I, you know, I, I start, I start kind of hamster wheeling, you know, I'm not getting any place. I'm not getting anything out of what I'm doing. It's not helping me much. And this, this little chart talks about it's, it's time to cross over when you get to that place. So when you're over there on the task positive side of the river, you're, you're, you're putting together a step-by-step -step plan and what's got to do, get done next and what is my goal here? Is this going to make sense? Who is this going to speak to? How do I do this? All of those sort of task-oriented things. And after you've done that for a while, you start realizing, oh, you're just making check marks to make, you know, you wrote down brush your teeth so that you could check it off. 
or um, you, you're, you, you've completely lost sight of the vision that you had when you started this, and you just feel like there's no more water in the well. You're just done. That is telling you, as loud as your brain can talk to you, to cross over the river. And in that case, what crossing over the river means is go do something that's in that default mode, that kind of neutral that you put your brain into. So go take a walk around the block or around the building or feed the dog or go play with your kids or go do something else. And that activates that default mode of your brain. And when your brain's in that mode, that's the time to do, what do I really, really want to have happen? What is my heart's desire? What's the goal, the big picture goal of all this stuff I'm doing? Or I wonder what Sam would think about that. Uh, or how can I find out more about this? What might be possible if we were to do something. And you can do that kind of thinking, usually for not as much time as you can do the task positive stuff. I, we're, we're pretty good at beating ourselves up and making ourselves stay on that task positive side of the river, sometimes too long. But when you've been on the default mode side, you start, you start just kind of fantasizing. And, and what I really, what is really the, the clue to me is the saboteurs come out. That's, and what I mean by that is I start thinking, oh, that would be a fabulous thing to do. Oh, but I don't have enough skill to do that. Or oh, I'll never, I'll never get that done. I, I don't have the talents or I don't have the time or the, the sabotage of your vision and your dream starts, starts overwhelming the dream or it just, there's nothing new there. There's the space just feels really like it says it says says it feels full. And the other tip is for some people they start to get really anxious. And when you start to get really anxious, or when the saboteurs the have have come out and brought out their knives and they're cutting away at your dream, that's the time to go make a list. What do I have to do to get the dream done? Or I think I'll go weed the garden. Or I think I'll go do some other task on my list. And it's just a matter of crossing over the river. It's not that you're bad. It's not that, oh, you have no confidence in yourself. Or, you know, you're, you're undermining yourself. Well, our brains just do that. It's how our brains work. And crossing over the river can be a really helpful thing to do. So I, that's, that's one of those little brain hacks that you can think about doing. I'm going to leave that up there. And, and if you're interested in, um, in getting this PDF, I'd just be pleased to send it to you. Just send me, send Madi or Lacey or somebody your, your email, let me know, and I'll, I'll shoot it off to you. Okay. Muddy, are you willing to do that for you? I just made you my secretary. <laughs> yes, definitely. No problem. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and send it to me? Um, anyway, just so that we, have it and we can send it out. Sure. That'd be great. I'll send, I'll send it along. Does anybody have any questions or, or uh, have, where have you seen that operate in your own life? I think that my brain unconsciously switches between the two. Um, but this How makes smart you of, are. <laughs> no, no, I mean this makes a lot of sense because so many times I've been like, why am I getting so overwhelmed and so bogged down? And and it's exactly what you're saying of the yeah. it's time to cross over. And now I have the language of understanding that, okay, no, I'm not incapable. I just need to do something else for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that makes yeah. a lot of sense. I, I, I like the way that it that it helps us reframe what we're doing into positive on both sides of the river, you know, and that overwhelm shows up on both sides of the river. Um, you know, you just, you just can't do any more of what it is you're doing. Well, the, your brain's trying to tell you, so do something different. Yeah. I think that's very, 
very helpful. I'm happy to know it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And, go ahead, Lacey. I'm oh, sorry. It's super helpful, again, like Maddie just said, um, having the language to just articulate to ourselves that the uh -huh. modes of being and needing to switch over. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, this, this, this graphic comes to us from Be Above Leadership, and they've got some great tools. You, you can Google on Be Above Leadership. Um, it's, it's fun to, to look at their stuff. Um, the, the interesting thing to me is this isn't a matter of your brain just getting tired. It's a matter of the chemistry that your brain produces. So the byproduct of being on the task positive side of the river makes you, makes you get tired of that and makes your wheel spin. And it's just your brain saying, I, 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 I want, I want to, I want it, I want different nutrients. I want different chemistry. Do something different for me. Yeah, and I think this is also helpful, too, because, um, you know, we've talked about it a lot within our team of the difference between working at home versus on site. You know, um, as you were saying earlier, you don't have the um, opportunities to go talk to a coworker for a minute and, and get that refresh and everything. Um, but this really kind of helps make sense a little bit more. I forgot where mm -hmm. exactly I was going with that. I think my brain's doing a little thing. <laughs> But, <laughs> oh, I remembered, sorry, this is how my brain works. Um, I think it's helpful, especially for me, um, to understand that this is how our brain is supposed to work. You know, we're not programmed to sit down and do eight hours of, um, you know, nose to the pavement, on the grind work. Like, it's not realistic, no matter how um, much we think that that's what does need to happen. And um, so I think it's more helpful for me to remember like, okay, no, this is actually how it's supposed to be for the eight hours, just switching between. Mm -hmm. Well, and it reframes how we think about productivity, not only our own, but other people. So, so that employee that is goofing off every time you look up and see what they're doing, maybe you need to pay a little bit more attention to what's what's really going on you know is it just that you happen to see them every time they get up because when they get up you they catch your eye you know or is there an issue and there's that there's that boss thing since <laughs> Cindy <laughs> sometimes it's only the boss he says listen you gotta you gotta be producing but if somebody's producing what they need to produce and you you think well how can they possibly be doing that Maybe they're incredibly productive. It's just they know how their brain works. And everybody's a little different about what works. You know, it's, we have to find our own hacks. Yeah, um, in the chat, Terrence brought up meditation. Um, it seems like a perfect example of that DMN side. It's a huge example of being in that, in what, what the scientists call the default mode, which uh, I, that's, I don't think without that scientific background, without somebody actually saying that, I don't know that I would say meditation is the default mode, but, and maybe that depends on how you're wired too. Yeah. Sure. So does anyone have any um, questions for Demi or any, um, you know, anything going on that you wanna talk about or discuss? Um, I do. I'll chime in if that's okay. Um, so as an entrepreneur, we're navigating oh, yeah. some uncharted water, some uncomfortable, right? Big stuff. <clears throat> and, you know, I have felt of fear kind of getting in the way of action. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I mean, do you, um, I would imagine that maybe is a, a somewhat of a common theme or I don't, you know, I'm just curious to know if you have 
insight in terms of overcoming some of that that fear or not being um absolutely so afraid to do or say the wrong thing that you're not doing anything that's we we have i i'm sure a lot of you have heard about the reptile brain or the amygdala or whatever it's it's our most primitive brain and it is the brain that's activated by fear and it doesn't have to be horror movie kind of fear it can be anxiety it can be that fleeting thought that you tamp down immediately but the chemistry is what starts rolling and when fear is bossing your brain around the the prefrontal cortex the part that makes us mammals uh, able to change our environments and change ourselves that that goes offline rational thought goes out the window because fight flight or freeze those are our three choices uh, take over there are two things that help us get out of that freeze that paralysis you were talking about and the biggest one is our breath learning how to breathe now I, that's pretty egotistical i'm going to teach you how to breathe right you've been doing it every day of your life for a lot <laughs> but our breath has a huge role in shaping our brain and our body chemistry and so if you can start paying attention to your breath when you're afraid it will help your brain come back online and it's also the pace of our breath if you're taking long inhales and short exhales that is gearing you up and energizing you and getting you ready to burst out of the starting block if you're taking shorter inhales and very long exhales that's the meditation place that's calming you down that's evening you out that's helping you be more serene so when you take control of your breath either direction it helps put your brain back online instead of your fight flight or freeze part so the breath is huge the other thing that will help you get out of paralysis and when you start saying i don't know what to do i'm paralyzed that is telling you you need to take one step it doesn't have to be more than just one step but take one definitive step if it's the wrong direction change to the other direction if it's the right direction take another step just do something not 15 things just one thing and then pause how's that working okay no not so good i think i'll go the other direction yeah that seems okay i'll take another one those two things controlling your breath and incremental action is what helps with paralysis now that's not dealing specifically with what you're talking about heather but that's how we help engage our brain to help us what does that get you thinking about does that help yeah for sure for sure um I th yeah i think that's it's um insightful to have the idea of just one step because that's kind of it right it's like not knowing what to do ultimately right <laughs> which you can't necessarily figure out from yeah head. it's okay. um, it's yeah. like an elephant mm -hmm. you have to start with just one bite mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and it's that action reflection rhythm do do a something step back and look how's that how's that doing okay then i'll take another step and it's very hard for us as human beings to to take that pause between our actions we start to you know it, it, the snowball effect starts happening and we want to do more and more and more and sometimes we get way down the track before we go that was really a sucky idea 
(laughs) (laughs) And that involves a lot of turning around or backing up or something. So it's, again, our brains are amazing. They are working for us all the time, especially when we think they aren't working for us. When we're asleep, that's some of the most important work your brain does. Mostly it's repair, but it's also making connections that in your thinking life you would never make. That's why often you'll wake up in the middle of the night and think, that's it. That's exactly what I need to do. Hmm. Write it down. Go back to sleep. (laughs) (laughs) Anybody else with a thought? Something? um, Terrence, yeah. Yeah, through my, like, I guess, um, development, um, I found that, like, you know, positive messages and, you know, um, being around positive people helps. Um, yep. I have I have a friend, he's, like, a motivational speaker, and I remember getting a ride with him in his car, and he had, like, positive messages he had written out, and, like, they were placed on his, like, you know, steering wheel, over his radio like on the, um, like, you know, like all over the place. And then I've also went to other like people's houses where they're like overwhelmingly positive people. And I noticed that they had like, like not pictures, but basically like words. Um, and you know, they, they ran out some quotes they liked and then they framed them and they put them along their, their, you know, their house and stuff like that. Um, so I did it. So I got some quotes cool. and then I put them around my, cause you know, like you said, like your brain's working all the time. You don't necessarily know what, what it's doing or what have you. Um, so I figure I try it out and, you know, um, I put those positive messages around my room, especially places where I'm at, you know, or facing usually. That's wonderful. And, and it's kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of like night and day um, as far as like, you know, I'm in a better mood most of the time and stuff like that. Like, I've noticed it since it happened. So I just wanted to share that. That's huge. And it's so important. I love that. And that we forget that really negativity activates that fear stuff. It usually comes out of a place of defensiveness, you know, either protecting ourselves or reacting in a defensive way. And once once we start activating that stuff, it's taking the, our best tool offline. We don't need to do that. There's another strategy that really helps people be positive, and that's to, to have a specific time of day that you express gratitude. Some people do it right before they go to sleep. Others, right when they wake up. Think of three things. Better yet, write them down that you're grateful for. And that helps you reframe the world and and what you're encountering, helps you remember the positive side. And chemically it helps your brain work better, but it also makes you a happier person. You're, You're much more likely to see the good stuff. And there's plenty of bad stuff out there. But if we wanna keep focusing on that, we're gonna keep falling into that fight, fly, or freeze mode and we don't get anything done. Anyone else have any comments or questions for Demi? I just love the take one small step um, tip. Like I, I'm pretty, I'm, <clears throat> I'm a pretty anxious person, and so, you know, I I think of the big picture, and I do a lot of planning and a lot of research, and basically for anything that I do, and that mm-hmm. is. Kind of like the um, wonderful that you do that that's great well that's a huge skill it's analysis analysis paralysis or you know whatever it's called and it usually like just taking that one small step it starts off the whole like okay yeah you're heading in the right direction or actually that's missing the mark do something Mm -hmm. else you get lots of feedback from that one small step don't you Thank you. I, I, I call it the next best step. You know, what's my next best step? It doesn't have to be big. And it doesn't really have to be the best one. Mm-hmm. It's just the one I do right now. 
Right, right. So yeah, thanks for sharing that. That was super helpful. That's a crossing the river strategy, you know, and that's, that's that anxiety that comes out when the, when the saboteurs are lurking around and you just go over and do something, a little mm -hmm. thing. You guys are wonderful. This has been a fun morning to spend with you. This has been great. Yeah. Well, I love working with entrepreneurs. I work with a lot of nonprofit people too. So if you know somebody who wants to engage with a coach and let me please say, if you're going to hire a coach, I'd love it if you hired me, but most important of all, hire someone who holds a credential because they've been trained in these uh, neurobiology and psychology um, truths, I guess, truisms, uh, ways of managing, and they're going to be focused on you. That's the, that's the code of ethics that we go by. So, Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Demi. Thank you, everybody, for so joining and participating. I'm, so I was able to meet you. I'm sorry? Cindy, we heard you. I, I just heard Cindy unmuting. She's in her car. Oh. <laughs> yes. I know. I, I'm, I'm in my car. I've been listening. I, this was very, very wonderful. I just have, do you have any book recommendations? I don't know if anyone else has been reading more during all of this, but... I would love like a favorite book suggestion that you have or something that anything or, uh, that you want to share as far as a, a resource. Just, I don't have a single book. I do I do a lot of reading in neurobiology. Um, I I do have one that, that I found fascinating lately and it's called The Body Keeps the Score. And it it's focused on trauma and uh, not always remembered trauma, sometimes uh, childhood trauma, and talks about how our brain gets wired to work in a particular way, and that part of becoming better functioning in the world is helping our nervous system deal with that. It's, uh, it's a kind of new exploration, pretty new since about 2014, of the vagus nerve. Oh, there you are, Lacey. Thank you. Love perfect. The book. Yeah. <laughs> Did you like it? Um, I'm actually still reading it. It's hard to yep. get through, for sure. It's not an easy read. Yeah. No, it's not. It gets easier though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I need to pick it back up. But yes, I'm so. Yeah. It feels very serendipitous that you brought that title up. So thank you. That's funny. Yeah. Well. It's pretty challenging, but but I I found it really. Uh, I think it's really important. The way we walk in the world is to forgive ourselves, and to cut ourselves some slack, and to recognize that almost all of us are doing pretty much the best we can. It's just there are things that are getting in our way, and discovering those things that get in your way are are a, a way to be happier and more whole. It's a great one. Awesome. I love it. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. Thank you all. Um, I, I'm, I'm at, so when, when, when I get to going out more, <laughs> I'll get stoked. And, but I, I can highly recommend it. It's a, it's a wonderful community and some great people. So thank you all. Thank you. And thank you so much, Demi. This has really been great. Very yeah. helpful. You guys have a great week. Thank Bye, you. Everybody. Thank you. See you soon. Bye-bye.